All right, so my, uh, my project's together and I want to measure the temperature of the device here. And uh, I was using my non-contact thermal sensor, which uh, puts out a laser to aim it, and then it captures some amount of the heat. And it's measuring, I don't know, right now it's measuring like 54 degrees or something like that centigrade. And uh, somebody mentioned, oh, you know, that laser is just the pointer and this thing collects like 30 degrees worth of, uh, of, uh, of heat. And so it's not very accurate for pinpointing things. And so um, I have another temperature uh, sensor here that has a little uh, cup. It has a reflector cup. And we can use that. And we can come in here real close. And it's measuring about 80 degrees C. All right, so we can get we can get close with this. This is some distance away. This thing I just turned it on. This thing is now measuring like 57 degrees. This is measuring 80, and that's because one's capturing a larger angle than the other. Because we can get really really close with this one. If we measured, if we measured out here, then it's measuring 34 degrees. So let me let me put that on paper so you'd understand it. So the uh, the sensor that has just a reflector, it's going to capture about 30 degrees unless you get really, really close, and then it's going to capture just whatever the entrance pupil is on this thing. Um, my one that points actually has a lens in it, and the specification on the unit says it's a five degree field of view. So it's actually pretty narrow. It's five degrees. So it's pretty good about, uh, pretty, pretty good about looking around, but it is a, a five degree field of view. Um, so, uh, uh, I wanted to get a thermal imager to do this better, and Banggood was nice enough to give me one. Uh, so, full disclosure, this was given to me by Banggood. This is a ET691. It's made by Tooltop. And I'll put a link below if you want to buy it. Um, it comes in a nice little case. I like the case. Uh, kind of a hard little case with a zipper. Let me zoom out so we can see what I'm doing here. And uh, here is the here is the thermal imager. So we'll turn that on. What comes in the box? You get a um, you get a charger. It did come with a, a European charger, but they included an adapter, uh, which is nice. So uh, it works in the U.S. And then a, a cable to charge it on the top of the device. Let me put this over here. On the top of the device is a little, a little opening, and there's a USB micro connector there to do the charging. And there's also a little uh, micro USB card uh, to store images and stuff. It takes, it can, it can take and store images. Now this is a, this is a nice design. I've seen other, other. Let me pop this open. So this has a nice big rechargeable battery in it. One of those, what are they? Uh, I can't remember, remember the number, 18650s or whatever. It's got a nice big rechargeable battery in it. It's supposed to be good for four hours once it's all charged up. Um, and uh, some of them come with all double A's and you're always replacing the double A's. So I like this design a lot better. Now this is a pretty low end unit. Um, and you know, the price is low end as well, but it, uh, uh, you, there's a trigger here and you pull the trigger and uh, the unit will turn on. It takes a second to turn on. And then, uh, let's see here, let's pop up here. So as we, as we look in here, we get all the glares off of it. You can see that we're getting, a, getting, getting an image of what's going on here. It automatically finds the brightest, uh, hottest point and it records it down here. So it's saying 80, 87 degrees Celsius is the hottest pixel and uh, the minimum is 25. So other parts of the, uh, like over here, the maximum is 28 and the minimum is 24. So not, nothing going on over there. So we have a, a, nice, a nice thing here. Now, uh, the high-end units have a camera in them and they show the visible and the infrared at the same time. Uh, this lower end unit uh, compensates for that by when you press the trigger, uh, it turns on the, the uh, video camera, or the, you know, and so if you like this picture, you hit this button, there's a cancel button and a, an accept button, and it uh, 
stores that on the card. So for every picture you take, you get the infrared picture and the visible picture, and then you can kind of compare them side by side. And uh, I'll show you some pictures here of what's going on. All right, let me take another one over here and then I will post process these in the when I'm making the uh, you can see the on this one, you can see the heat sink as well. OK, so like I said, it's pretty basic. Um, it has a menu system and you can ch change some things in the menu, um, you know, centigrade Celsius. Uh, you, there's a, can, a, a date, a date, you, you can set the date. So when it timestamps everything, um, you, you do the menu, menu this away, you select it this way. You can change the language to English or Chinese or whatever. You can change the emissivity uh, and, and you can format the SD card and stuff. Anyway, change the default settings. It's all pretty standard stuff. Um, I won't go through the whole, uh, I won't go through the whole thing here. Let's. You can focus on. Let me move the camera over here so it likes to focus on this thing. There we go. Um, so we can exit out of this as well. So you can change whether what type of color gradient you want, uh, whether you want black and white, you want color and things like that. I mean, it's it's all it's all very very standard stuff. It tells you the battery condition here, so it says it's fully charged. Um, its uh, update rate is about uh, nine frames a second or something like that. Um, it's fairly slow. Um, so there's a, uh, let's see here. There is the infrared lens here. It's probably a germanium lens or something. Uh, there's an infrared lens here. Uh, this is the, let's see, yeah, infrared lens. This is, I think, is the visible camera lens. And it has a red filter in front of it, so it's only taking. Well, that's not true. It does take. I don't know. It does look like it has. Oh, I know. It has a filter on it, so it's uh, the the heat and stuff doesn't affect the camera. I think. I'm not quite sure about that. Anyway, it has an IR filter in front of it. Now this one down here is a lot of times when you're going around looking for things like uh, we had air conditioning problems yesterday. It was over 100 degrees here and I was using this to go around making sure the air conditioner was working good and stuff. So it came in handy for that. Um, and um, shit, what was I going to say? So if you're in a dark room, it's really hard to see what's going on. And when you take that, uh, the, the, the visible picture, there's no light. And so it can't take a picture. So if you hold this button down for three seconds, it turns on an LED. Okay. So that bottom thing is an LED. So it illuminates the room. So it's basically a flash, right? Cause so if you're in a dark place, you can turn on the LED and then your uh, visible picture turns out, turns out better. So that's what that's all about. Um, yeah, not much else to say about it. Um, Oh, I know what to say about it. Let's see. So remember that uh, I was complaining I didn't have enough resolution of what was going on, right? And let's go back to this drawing here. All right, so my old unit here was, was five degrees. Um, all right, so the way that these thermal imagers work is they actually have uh, pixels, right? And so you can imagine that these pixels are taking a picture, right? And this particular sensor is 32 by 32 pixels. So it's a pretty crude camera, right? It's 32 by 32, but each pixel is a, is a thermal sensor, right? So the unit is taking a picture about 30, 30 degree cone, but you have 32 pixels across that 30 degrees. So each pixel is seeing a one degree piece of the puzzle, right? So you're, you're able to resolve about a one degree uh, thermal image here. Now, like I said, this is a fairly low end unit, but um, you can get uh, better and better pixels. You can go to 64 by 64. You can go up to, I think like 120 by 160. Depends on how much money you wanna pay. I think those are around the $500 price range. I think this is around the $130 price range, something like that. So, you know, you get what you pay for. 
Uh, but one degree is, is great. Uh, one degree will be able to pinpoint what's going on here. I, already, I, already, I know it's getting hot, right? Um, so do I actually really need to know a really have to have a really pretty picture or do I just need to know the temperature? Well, I really just need to know the temperature. I mean, the higher ones, I would love to have a higher one, higher, you know, a higher grade one. Um, but this one's fine for, for, for finding, uh, finding things like, like, I, like I just showed when I used, when I used either one of these, I was getting just an, uh, an averaging, um, and this one, I would have to get really, really close. Um, you know, it's okay. You, you can get by with that. I think this one's sold by Harbor Freight. And I don't remember where I got this one. This is a uh, Bentec GM320. I don't know if that was a Harbor Freight one or not, too. I don't know. I, don't, I think I bought this one off the internet somewhere. Um, it has an opening, too. Yeah, this one uses little AAA cells. Um, but this one will be great. Uh, thanks again to Banggood for sending it in. And uh, yeah, it'll come in handy. I want to include a last photograph here um, showing that at, at uh, reasonable distances, that there's very little parallax error and uh, things overlap pretty good.